there's a process that occurs in biological organisms called hormesis. And this process is typically about the absorption of small quantities of toxins and the gradual acclimation of said organism to these toxins. But more broadly, hormesis can also apply to getting used to any sort of stressor and in time adapting a stress response that's positive. A good example of this might be going to the gym and lifting weights. You create a stress response by damaging the muscle tissue locally, and in time, if you take the right measures, you will recover, and you will improve, and you will get stronger, as well as increase the size of your muscles. That is a type of hormesis, one could say. But hormesis only works in the context of gradual adaptation and gradual acclimation. And so, for example, if you took a swig of a whole jug of poison, you're probably going to drop dead on the spot versus taking a tiny drop of it. And the same would apply, obviously, to lifting hypertrophy. Imagine, for example, you were lifting and your sleep was total crap, your nutrition were total crap, and you lifted seven days a week and had no days off and no recovery. What's going to happen then? Well, you're going to enter into overtraining and in some ways, you're going to achieve the opposite. You're going to become weaker. You might fall ill because that might have an effect on your immune system. And you're just not going to feel really good. So hormesis can only function, that is, positive adaptation through gradual exposure to experiences, let's put it this way, or stressors, if it is a long, drawn-out process. And assuming you have time to rest and recuperate to allow for the adaptive response to even take place. Life itself and life experience isn't too different from that, in fact, because a lot of people like to bandy about the word suffering and failure and how you should learn from them and improve. And all this is true, right? Ideally, if you suffer or fail, you can get something out of it. You can gain something from it. But there's a certain context for suffering and failure. One and I think this is probably the most important prerequisite, is that the suffering and failure doesn't destroy you from the ground up. Again, akin to lifting weights and hypertrophy. If you tear your muscles to shreds and get an injury, you're not helping yourself, you're harming yourself. And so failing a little bit, in a sense, might be okay. You can learn certain lessons. You can do better next time. But a complete failure, an inability to pick yourself back up, to use the phrase, results in effectively nothing. Likewise, there are lessons to be learned from the process of suffering. But suffering in itself is not necessarily a net good. Yes, you can have in time an adaptive response to suffering. You can learn from suffering. You can learn how to avoid certain types of suffering. And again, an analogy to the gym, you can in fact grow stronger from suffering. But if the suffering is too great, you won't be able to recover. Everybody has their limits, and everyone's different in this regard. And therefore, hormesis, or the process of gradual acclimation, positive adaptive response, whatever it might be, whether it's local in the muscles, or applies to your body as a biological organism, or simply applies to your existence in response to failure and suffering. Well, there's a context for all of that, obviously. But there's another aspect that doesn't necessarily find this analogy in the actual process of hormesis as it applies to the body because the adaptive response to life stressors and experiences, i.e. stress and failure, needs to be sufficiently positive such that you can utilize it later on. So effectively what I'm talking about is getting knocked down and getting back up. A lot of people will preach this. They'll say, when you get knocked off your horse, you got to get back on the horse. When you get knocked down, you got to get back off the ground. you got to keep on going. Keep on pushing yourself. Okay. The question, though, is how many times? How frequently? Because, again, if the adaptive response is not sufficient, you won't get anywhere. That's what we see in so-called failure to launch, this phenomenon that's often used to describe young men who never get anywhere, right? It could also be applied to young women, although they never really talk about young women in this regard, strangely enough. What a shocker. But essentially... If all your life is failure and the hormetic adaptive response can never take place for whatever reason, maybe the life nutrition is poor, so to speak, so the 
recovery time, which is the most important aspect of the gym, and I'd argue also the most important aspect of life. And so this recovery time for repeated failures simply is insufficient to gain anything from these failures. Or the suffering is too excessive. Again, some suffering, you might argue, is even good. Too much suffering smothers you, and you might never recover from it. And generally speaking, when you look at the phenomenon of so-called failure to launch, and they might not even be officially black pill, they simply have experienced repeated failures throughout their life, leading to the opposite of the Matthew effect, to those who have, all shall be given, to those who have nothing, all should be taken, this sort of thing. And I think successful people, suffering as they do from survivorship bias, often forget this. They forget that eventually they had some success. Yes, they had failures, but in their blindness, which is a human blindness, it's a very human thing to feel, they forget about the successes interspersed between the failures. And that leads, of course, as I said, to survivorship bias. But there are people out there who never have these successes. And it's not always for want of trying. These are people, in fact, who pick themselves back up once, twice, thrice, five times, 20 times. Eventually, the engine can't run any longer. There's never an adaptive response because there needs to be something positive thrown in there. These people, these so-called failures to launch, Life needs to eventually throw them a bone. If the bone is never thrown to them, they end up going nowhere. And people scratch their heads and ask, why? Isn't it obvious? There needs to be some kind of opportunity, some kind of positive opportunity that will push them further. There needs to be some success. It can't just be failure after failure after failure. What is the solution to this? There really aren't particularly good solutions here. But what I am saying is that when we think about failure to launch and we think about success, we should perceive it somewhat differently. We should look at it with different eyes. If there ever is to be an intervention concerning these matters, then it would have to be an intervention that at least allows for some success or mitigation of the suffering, such that this hormetic adaptation, this stress response, yields positive results instead of further contributing to the problem. But we don't see it that way more often than not. We see the individual encapsulated in a moment of time as the end result of a concatenation of failures that, in many cases, were largely outside of his control. And the purpose of this video is to make people at least perceive that somewhat differently. If every experience you have with something is negative, guess what? You're going to perceive that something as negative. If all your experiences are positive, likewise, you'll perceive that something is positive. And if it's a mixed bag, you will perceive the thing as a mixed bag. You can only get up so many times after life has beaten you down. The problem these days in an atmosphere and environments increasingly hostile to males is that there's rarely a helping hand being lent to these men who need that positive experience just once, just a little bit of success to keep them going, to help them get somewhere. No man is an island after all. And yet we look at so-called failures to launch as these islands floating out at sea. And we puzzle and wonder over it. Anyways, as always, thank you for tuning in. Please leave a like, share, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. May the gods watch over you. Take care. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.